I reported to you all that this may happen over the weekend, and earlier today it was officially announced that NASA and Boeing have finally sucked up their pride, and they have asked Elon Musk for help rescuing the two astronauts that are still stranded on the International Space Station. Now, if you ask me, they should have went to Elon Musk for help a long time ago. But their pride got in the way. They did not want to admit their failures. In fact, for a while there, it looked as if they were going to allow these astronauts to die. That they rather these astronauts possibly die upon re-entry. They rather risk their lives than go to Elon for help. And the fact that they have finally gone to Elon for help should show you that this situation is 10 times worse than they say, 10 times worse than we think. Because, trust me, they did not want to resort to this, but they had to. So now, Elon Musk is going to send a ship up there in February to rescue these two individuals. They were only supposed to be on the space station for eight days. Now it looks like they're going to be up there for about eight months. But the story doesn't end there. They want you all to think that this is the happy moment. Yay, we're going to bring the astronauts home. The reality is, for Elon Musk to be able to dock this ship at the space station and rescue these astronauts, they have to get the Starliner the ship that the astronauts travel to the space station on, they have to get the Starliner to disconnect from the space station and travel back to Earth without anyone inside. They're going to have to do this remotely. And the reality is, and they're not going to tell you the whole truth, the reality is Boeing and NASA have already kind of admitted that they don't know if that's going to be possible. Now, if that's not possible, I don't know how they're going to get these astronauts off the space station in February. I'm not saying that they won't ever be able to get them off the space station, but it won't happen in February if they're not able to successfully get the Starliner to detach and travel back to Earth. So there's so many more complications that we may have to deal with. But for now, let's watch this news clip and then I'll be right back with more thoughts. Alicia, as a real blow to Boeing that has mm -hmm. suffered its own woes with the 737s and, and the like, as well as uh, NASA's reputation at stake. Of course, NASA and Boeing were doing this Starliner. They're now having to call Elon Musk to save the day. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Bill Nelson, the NASA administrator, said, you know, they've made mistakes in the past. He brought up the past two shuttle disasters. He said that they have been reaching out to employees, telling anyone who, within their their reach, to, if they have objections, that they need to speak up. So obviously, whoever had objections, whatever science, uh, whatever tests they had run, whatever, ever, anything they came upon uh, floated to the top and they realized this was just too risky. So this was a trip that started out as eight days. It has now become eight months. And we heard one of the officials there at NASA saying that, you know, normally uh, normal expeditions can go up to six months and then some will go up to 12 months. So this eight months still falls within the window that they're used to. It's not outside of it. However, Griff, this is not news anyone wanted to hear, especially their families who have been waiting. And now we have two NASA astronauts who continue to be stuck in space. They are, and the questions going forward about Boeing's response. This is, by all accounts, uh, a catastrophic failure for Boeing in their reputation. And now, with Elon Musk's SpaceX coming to the rescue and fortunately trying to get those astronauts back safely, that is, of course, the paramount top concern in this situation. But going forward, I think there are a lot of questions for NASA, but even more so pointedly at Boeing. And, you know, the as we listen to some of the astronauts there and, and, and uh, Dana Weigel, the, the manager there at the end, getting into some of the details, talking about the mission focus, we also learned in that press conference that uh, the Dragon SpaceX mission will have to go two fewer astronauts instead of four. They'll just be able to send two this time to the space station to make room to bring Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore back because of the failure. And that's what they call it, a failure of Boeing and NASA. So let me put things into perspective for you. 
Back in 2014, NASA awarded Boeing over $4 billion. I believe it was around $4.2 billion to create the Starliner spacecraft. And then around the same time in 2014, NASA awarded SpaceX and Elon Musk about $2.5, $2.6 billion to build the Dragon spacecraft. Now, Boeing and Elon Musk, they've both had a decade to work on these spacecrafts. The Starliner has yet to have a successful mission. There's been a complication every single time, usually before takeoff. There were complications before takeoff this time. But NASA and Boeing were so desperate, knowing that the Starliner was not working properly, they still blasted it off in outer space, and now they can't get it back. Meanwhile, Elon Musk has been very successful. His rocket ships have had several, over a dozen successful missions. And you would think it would be the other way around. Here we have NASA, right? NASA kind of owns the monopoly on space exploration and knowledge about space and rocket ships. They've been in here since day one. Then on the other hand, you have Elon Musk, a bored billionaire that wanted to start building rocket ships. And for some reason, he is doing way better than NASA. He's doing way better than Boeing. Now, even though NASA gave SpaceX money, they haven't really been, you know, fully hands-on involved in creating the spacecrafts that Elon Musk creates. Meanwhile, NASA has been all the way hands-on with Boeing. So you would think that the Boeing would be far superior. Here you have NASA, the number one, when you think of space, you think of NASA. You know, they should be at the top of their game. So what's the problem? Well, you see, Elon Musk has been, you know, focused on getting humans to Mars and things like that. And NASA and Boeing, they've been focused on DEI. As Elon Musk is trying to figure out how to blast rocket ships and land them, NASA and Boeing are making little pictures of uh, the LGBTQ flag using... Um, telescope photos from different planets and different star systems. So that's the reality of what's going on here. If you're wondering why is there such a big difference, how did Elon Musk come in here and do better than NASA? It's because NASA and Boeing, they're focused on DEI. They're focused on pride parades. They're focused on diversity, equity, inclusion. They're hiring Tons of people who have no business working for them that don't know the slightest things about building ships or outer space. They're hiring people because of their race and sexuality. And that's why their airplanes are falling apart. Their spaceships are falling apart. Meanwhile, Elon Musk is succeeding in every single way that NASA never could. Because NASA has shackled themselves to this woke ideology and now, two astronauts are trapped in, in space because of it. That's the reality of the situation. That's the reality of DEI. If you're offended by that, I'm sorry that you're offended by reality. But I live in the real world, and I'm not going to sugarcoat things for your feelings. So as of right now, we're just going to have to watch this play out. We still don't know how this story ends. But we do got good news today, and I'm hoping that they successfully get these astronauts back home. But for now, I want you all to successfully land down in my comment sections below. Let me know what you think about this. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell. And as always, I'll talk to you all soon in the next video.